Hi there. So today, what I want to touch on is, uh, I think I stumbled upon this yesterday and I've been thinking about it. It's interesting. Why am I doing this? Why am I saying these things to you? What's the, why, right? So when you take the role of a teacher or, you know, you might be a teacher, instructor, professor, lecturer, yeah, trainer, mentor, speaker, orator, debater. So in, in all these various politician, right, all these various forms, in, in the role of a leader, you speak, you say things. And I want to look at it from the learning aspect. So mostly teaching, training, lecturing, professoring, whatever. Um, one of the things that I notice nowadays is that there are a lot of youngsters. A lot of youngsters, like how I started. I started teaching very early on. When I was, I, I started by teaching physics to my classmates when I was 18. Right. So there are a lot of youngsters now taking up this job. And one of the primary reasons I see is driving them is the money they make. So even I used to make money, but never really wasn't an attraction to me because that wasn't why I got into it the first place. Like the first couple of years of teaching I did in my life, I never got paid. I was just doing it. So for me, my whole uh, teaching, training and lecturing career has been on a different purpose. But a lot of youngsters nowadays, I look at them teaching, performing, and you see, the reason of the things they say in the classroom right the things that come out of their mouth it's more driven towards making the student happy making the student happy but but okay it is good to make the student happy but the problem is that you're doing it that a lot of these um, it's a very dangerous thing because a lot of them are doing it to ensure that the student is happy, the student hears what they want to hear, and in hearing so, they will retain your popularity. They will accept you, and they will continue to gratify you, and they will continue to keep you on a pedestal. In a completely imaginative sense, because students will never do that, right? So if you are teaching, okay, you come onto the stage and you are saying things, okay, this is uh, physics, you know, we are gonna we're gonna learn heat or whatever. But you are teaching in a way and embedded in the things that you say that you know they gratify them and so you know uh, every once in a while they throw you a birthday party, they make you very happy, uh, they post selfies with you, uh, they you know they post Instagram stories with you, right? So the purpose of the teaching itself is that it's to maintain popularity, is to gain a certain self of a certain sense of attraction, and to tell yourself, oh, "Okay, I'm accepted in this circle." <laughs> but, but what is the true purpose of teaching? It's to educate them, right? It's to educate the students, and this is serious business. And how can you educate one? If the entire reason why you're doing it and the way you're doing it is driven by something else, the primary purpose is to educate. And thus, I see in the great teachers who have taught me and in the great teachers of history, what I see is a thirst for knowledge, a deep thirst for knowledge. They keep pursuing knowledge. They keep looking at, searching for knowledge more and more. That and on the other end, humility. The strength to say I don't know when they don't know to students. You put those two together, you've got a wonderful teacher. And that teacher right, will honestly speak to you. And that teacher will say the things that the student won't like at that particular moment. But five years down the line, 10 years down the line, somewhere in that student's life, that student is going to remember there was one person who was courageous enough to tell me the truth. 
and that person was that teacher. We do that all the time in our life. It suddenly clicks. My God, when I was in school, he told me this. Why didn't I get it? And that is powerful. And so teaching is not about me, not about the teacher, but it's about the students. Right. And I'll tell you the danger in teaching in a way, because I've done it. <laughs> okay, I, I think I spoke about it, but there was a brief time period. I started becoming very popular. And by 2013, I was a hit lecturer and I was commanding classes of 300 students, 400 students, physical sessions, learning uh, performance operations, performance management, management uh, accounting. And for me, I found it very easy to come on stage and say things that would, uh, that gets them, uh, you know, riled up, that gets them emotionally engaging with me, that gets them clapping, right? I, I found it very easy. I started doing it. About a year later, things started hitting me. And then I went back to my normal gear. The problem is we think that students will applaud, cheer, post a selfie, acknowledge you on Instagram, you know, you'll get a bunch of likes or whatever, right? <laughs> we think that and we enjoy that, we like that, right? But what happens is down the line, okay, down the line, especially if they have other teachers who genuinely taught them, when the student is 30 years old, when the student is 40 years old, when the student is growing older and older, the student is going to see what happened. The student will not remain a student your entire life as a teacher. The student is going to grow and see more. The student might probably see more than you would have ever seen. This has happened to me with teachers. Teachers who uh, tried to teach me or taught me financial management, uh, <laughs> management accounting, you know, I am ever thankful to them. But some of, sometimes, some of these people, I see their ego when they taught the things they taught as if, you know, they, they were know-it-alls. And then I actually step out into society and I realize, geez, these people haven't seen anything at all. In contrast to some teachers who are remarkable, I, I must say, especially my college teachers, Professor Nimal Hityarachi, but a couple of university professors I had. I am so thankful to them. So this is what I wanted to impart, you know, as a teacher. But not only as a teacher, it could be uh, a, a simple role of instructing, sharing your knowledge, uh, maybe a viva session, uh, maybe a lecturing session, maybe a instruct, maybe a training session. Anything that you do, anything that you say, like the fundamental focus, the fundamental drive behind why you're saying the things you're saying, why you're doing the things you're doing, why you're joking the way you're joking, why you're making that particular joke, all of that, all the words that are coming out of your mouth, all the uh, facial expressions you're gonna make, right? all the toning and the loudness and the verbal projections and the ups and the downs of melody you're gonna maintain, all of that must be driven to educate the student, to inform the student, to bring out, to, to, to break the student's mind, the barriers in the student's mind free. That is where true teaching is. True teaching and if the student doesn't like it, tell the student, be kind and tell the student, you may not like this. I know. Right? I passed your age, but I know that this will bode well for you, this will work well for you. I bid you only the good in life. Take this, think about it, attack it, contradict it, argue about it, move on. That is where real teaching is. So if in some corner of your teaching career, lecturing career, instructing career, training career, in some corner, you have this fundament, this purpose of, you know, okay, I want to be accepted. I want my students to tell me who I am and do what I am and, you know, share my, my uh, photo or take pictures with me and take, call me for parties and throw me birthday parties and all that. Uh, <laughs> that is not a real teacher and that is definitely not what a real teacher expects.
that is what I wanted to share today. Think about it. Uh, do well. And um, God bless you guys. All the very best.